Okay, one, two, three. Hello, beautifuls. Another fantastic, magical morning. And today, I'd like to play some Ors of Control, is what I plan to say. But yesterday, I was stuck for two hours straight in one standard event, playing Ors of Control because you face a lot of Ors of Control, with the occasional Esper Control here and there. So I just uh, resigned that event, it was nothing interesting to see, and I decided to just make a quick mono white deck to see how this deck is faring currently in the meta. And it appears like you're playing cycles of opponents right now. Uh, like you saw in my mono green deck, we faced what four <laughs> no four or so control decks. Yesterday with the Azorius deck, I faced like three of them in a row. And I just like, uh, screw this, resigned and started over. And uh, today uh, I gave up on Ors of Control because uh, when you play Ors of Control, you're facing Ors of Control. Anyways, let's play some Mono White and see how it fares. Let's get straight into the deck list. All right, so this is the standard Mono White deck we're going to play. And you can tell I was pretty triggered as I was playing this deck, as evident by the title. Uh, let's go over the cards. We're playing four copies of Hopeful Initiate, uh, one copy. A copy of uh, Paladin Class, two portable assholes. We're playing four adversaries, four Luminar Aspirants, four Talias. We got four Archon of Emeria. We got two Brutal Cathars. We got two Redain God of the Worthy, three Adeline Re Resplendent Cathar. We're playing three Skyclave Apparition. We got four Wandering Emperor, and that is about it. One Cave, one Egainjo, and four Crawling Barons. So yeah, as you can tell, we're trying to modify Mono White against the very prevalent rune decks by playing, you know, Archon of Emeria and also Talia, Guardian of Thraben. It's interesting to note that <laughs> Archon of Emeria also can kind of ruin other control decks with the whole non-basic lands your opponent control enters the battlefield tapped and boy oh boy it feels good to play this against Izzet control, which we are playing against uh, a couple of games in this uh, video. Uh, we are also playing more copies of Skyclave Apparition compared to Brutal Cathar also due to the stupid uh, rune stack. So you can get rid of that stupid uh, Kami, Kami, and I've used the word stupid too many times in this sentence. And we're also playing, of course, the best emp uh, the best uh, Planeswalker, or arguably one of the best uh, Planeswalkers currently, the Wandering Emperor. So we can flash it in and just remove any sort of uh, threats. Uh, I'm just realizing right now we should play a, a couple of copies of Miria's Call, but I might change that later in the video depending on how we fare against the opponents. Alright, so that is the deck. I hope you enjoy the content. And uh, yeah, do, do not play Esper Control or Orso Control right now. It is a nightmare. Alright, let's get started. As always, if you have any questions about the deck or the gameplay, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below, you know I love to hear from you. And if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing and liking. Your clicks make this channel tick. <laughs> and at the end of the video, I'll talk about the new cards from Kamigawa and whether or not they are worth crafting for this deck. Alright, let's start the first game. Alright, the hand looks great and we get to start. And yeah, hopefully we're playing against Wars of Control because I got a bone to pick with these people. Man, today sucked so hard. <laughs> and hopefully I can get the content done in order to actually make a video tonight. And uh, okay, maybe Esper Control uh, could be Mono Blue. Either way, Italia is going to make their life a living hell. <laughs> All right, is it okay? To be fair, is it? It's not that impressive. Let's play Adeline with no fear of uh, Javari runes <laughs> or disruption, and yeah, let's see. I mean, come on, Talia on the play against the spell casting deck. I mean, we don't even have the best curve. We don't have the the turn one hopeful initiate. So yeah, it's not even the best hand. But I'm curious what he's going to do. Okay, three mana expressive iteration. God damn, this feels good. Again, I wish I was playing against Ors of Control. <laughs> All right, and uh, yeah, let's play out the Archon of Emeria and let's attack for wow, five, six, seven, eight, nine damage. Yeah, and we can actually use the Gainju because we have so many uh, legendary creatures in play. 
because it costs less to activate for each legendary and we have both Talia and Adeline out. And his non-basic land came into play tapped. Thank you very much, Archon. So this is why people are playing Mono White. It's not very expensive compared to the other top tier decks and... <laughs> okay, nice. You got me. You got me. A two mana fading hope. I mean, even if he has... Even burned on the house, it's not going to save him because of Talia. Alright, first game done. Let's do another one. Okay, we get to start again. And wow, this shuffler is really... It needs to be updated. 2-2-2, two, 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 huh? And I'm not gonna lie. I've been trying out other online card games. And <laughs> I'm telling you, this uh, weird uh, rig shuffler is only an MTG arena. And, you know... You had to add it to the game. It didn't come with, you know, the game. It could have been random, but someone actually physically put in, you know, a shuffler that looks at your hand. It's so stupid. This hand, the hand, hand smoother. I know why it's still there. Anyway, let's play out the aspirant and yes. And I looked at the alchemy stuff and wow, they didn't make any changes whatsoever. The economy is still crap. So personally, I'd advise you to stay the f away from that. Okay. Uh, that's a very good card. Let's play out the Archon and yeah, let's put a counter on the Aspirant and attack. Uh, but yeah, I looked at, I mean, I thought maybe they had impl implemented some new deals or whatever to get people to play Alchemy, but <laughs> nope. And that came into to play uh, Taft. This Archon of Myria is so goddamn good. Yeah, and as you saw in the previous game, that is why you play aggro, or especially mono-white aggro. Some games are incredibly quick and you won even before you started. So we can play the Aspirant here, or we can... Let's put a counter on the Aspirant and offer him to double trade for it. And if it does, let's flash in the Emperor and just solo kill both of them. Okay, so yeah, it doesn't really matter what we put here because we're gonna do enough damage regardless. So let's get you out. And then, yeah, and the next turn we can play at the adversary. Oh, okay, the game is already over. Okay, this is why you play Mono White. And we are on the play again. It should be illegal to be this lucky. Uh, yeah, let's get the Initiate out and then possibly the Luminarch Aspirant. But yeah, I'm so glad we're getting some games on here. I think it's content worthy. I was really struggling with uh, Warsaw stuff earlier today. And okay, pause. Okay, hello. Uh, no, thank you. I'm not in the mood. So let's play out the Aspirant. And you can tell he has a stick to it, which means it probably has a play with fire. So I'm going to put the counter on top of the Initiate instead. Because I'm pretty sure it's going to kill the Aspirant here. Yeah, see, so if we, normally you'd put it on the Aspirant so you can train him the following turn. But yeah, it was clearly that he had a spell ready to remove it. So yeah, I'm so happy we get some games done here. Okay, so it's is it again. Hopefully we get to <laughs> ruin his life. Uh, I think uh, we can play out the adversary here and just uh, keep attacking and possibly upgrade the attack power next turn. But we are missing on land. I guess this is the way <laughs> we're finally going to lose. And there's the land. Sadly, it's the one tap land, which is unfortunate. Let's attack first and see if he has a way to deal with our minions. And uh, now this uh, initiate is going to be very tough for him to deal with. Let's play out Talia. Arguably, we should have played, it, played her out earlier, but um, uh, we were already pretty late. And we already committed to the Aspirant before, so I figure we'll just go all in and do as much damage as possible. But yeah, I don't know what he's going to do now. So yeah, like I said earlier, I tried out some different online uh, card games and yep, they don't have the same issues as MTG Arena. Uh, it's actually currently with the standard. It is very, very painful to play any black colors because you're going to get matched up with Mono Black, Esper and uh, Orsov. And uh, none, of the, none of those are very fun to play against. I guess Mono Black is fine, but I'd rather stick with, I guess, green colors now. Because it's kind of safe. You don't get matched up with these terrible decks. All right, he's down to four. I think we should play at uh, Redain here and just uh, avoid uh, what's it called? Burn down the house. And I don't think he can deal with uh, 
uh, with our board. If we didn't st uh, struggle with land, we would have been able to activate the Cave of the Frost Dragon in case he wiped the board. There's Goldspan Dragon, and that is game, I think. Alright, and uh, yes, that is how Mono, play, uh, Mono White essentially plays out. You're on the play and you win incredibly easy, or you are on the draw and you kind of win easy. And we're gonna speed up the gameplay and turn up the music, and yeah, uh, it's a shorter video today because I'm exhausted and I really tried to make it work with an Orso Control deck and it just bite, bit me in the ass, so yeah. Thank you so much for watching, you rock, let's enjoy some Mono White aggro.
All right, we got five wins, which I'm very happy with since my brain was fried. I mean, we kind of cheated by playing mono white. And yeah, but I was very worried. It was like a high chance this video was not going to be released. So yeah, hopefully tomorrow will be a lot easier to make content. But yeah, there's some changes I'd like to make to the deck here. Uh, first of all, I do think the Usher is kind of worth playing. Uh, having that one drop is pretty sweet and uh, the Paladin class can go and so can the Portable Asshole. The Mirius, uh, Archon of Mirror is pretty good, but we don't need four copies and uh, we didn't really find much use of this Calculate Apparition. We didn't face a single rune deck. I don't know, man. How the... I don't know. <laughs> if you look at Untap GG or on either hub, you can tell that uh, there should be, you know, based on the amount of decks of certain... Um, the, like, you should be facing the most played deck, right? We should be facing other mono white decks or rune decks or any of this matter, but instead we just fa faced some weird landfall decks in the end. It was kind of weird. Anyway, this is the deck. I would have it in case I were to play it again. Uh, the new cards, I mean, the Wandering Emperor is worth crafting. I don't know about four copies, but two or three is fine. And uh, yeah, Restoration, uh, not the Restoration, the Eganju Seat of the Empire is worth crafting. And yeah, that's about it for the Kamigawa cards. And one white obviously is worth crafting because A, you can keep uh, <laughs> the rune decks in, char in check while also uh, as ascending up the ladder rather quickly. Okay, thanks so much for watching till the end. You rock. Like and subscribe and have a good fucking day.